I have found what may possibly be the bottom of the barrel for an FMV game that ever existed. Strap in tight because me cursing is going off the charts. This is Wirehead, a full motion video game released in 1995 by the Code Monkeys, also known for their work on that other great game, Tomcat Alley. But where Tomcat Alley is a mediocre game, this is a full shit stop of just a full motion video which resembles a Sunday afternoon, family-friendly, low-budget public TV movie. Wirehead has the same production value of a bad Goosebumps episode. And then, even with lower standards. Okay, so this media product, as I will call it, was released on the Sega CD, a gaming console. Like most FMV games for this device, the actual gameplay input was very low. Wirehead drags that bar even further down below. The only thing you do is literally Watch this dreadful Hallmark TV movie take place, while in some instances you as a player tap left, up or right to make a choice on what to do. Oh and you push start to play the game. What a waste of controller button usage. The player gets a funny intro about the main protagonist. Package for Ned Hubbard. That's me. <laughs> If you find this funny, you and I cannot be friends. The paper thin, almost non-existent story revolves around this main character Ned. From the moment you start, you get thrown into the action. The only thing told is that some doctor called Dr. Oha tells you through a VHS tape that people are after you for the device in your head. Two guys show up, claiming they are FBI agents. Yes. My name is Frank Ross. This is my partner, Will Kramer. We're with the FBI. I'd like it if you'd come with us and answer a few questions, please. And go! That wasn't very really nice. I'm not gonna bite you. Oi, fucking hell, mate. Did the game start? Choose fast and, even more, random to get to somewhere. Just like in Tomcat Alley, you only have a few seconds to decide in which direction you want to move net to. Now, picking a choice here is so random. Come here! You're killing me! <laughs> this game revolves purely around trial and error. Take a left, you die. Take a right, you die. Go up, you get in the hallway. Take a left in the hallway, you die. And you have to start all over. You only have three batteries. And each time you get caught or killed, it takes half a battery. So six tries for the entire game. That doesn't give two shits about letting you watch this crap over and over again. There's no skip button for the movies. So you have to watch this low production value poop over and over and over again. Now I'm going to mention the worst thing about this interactive movie from the start. My main problem is that it's shown like a movie. Not like a game. Let me explain. When a game is in first person or third person, you have a moment of choice to see where you are going. Go left into a door, go right into an alley for example. Because it's shot like a movie with camera angles and camera cuts, it takes the player imminent decision making away, resulting in just randomly pressing a button to see whatever happens. Because you can't see what Ned is seeing, you are seeing whatever the cameraman and editor is showing you. What is left, what is right or straightforward. The developer should have placed the camera behind Ned for each choice. The camera sometimes swerves around from left to right in an action scene. So picking one of these three options gets thrown into the mix. Resulting time after time Ned getting caught or killed. And by making a choice you get the most random of events for Ned. Excuse me, is that seat taken? It's clear that the developers take any location they could get for cheap to fill the movie gaps in this game. You go from one random location to another random location that has absolutely nothing to do with all this shit. By now tell me what is Wirehead, who is Wirehead, 
What is a wirehead and why the fuck should I care about wirehead? The game explains nothing. There are still people chasing you, from the fake FBI guys to random police officers. Explain to me how the local police is suddenly involved in all of this. I can fill in those huge plot holes myself. I think that those FBI guys came up with a fake APB for Ned. But why let the player fill in the blanks? This should take like 5 to 10 seconds to jam a scene like that in the production. Characters are introduced all of a sudden with no backstory. Hi, I'm a reporter. Hi, I'm a bad guy. And Ned just rolls with it. Every time you get caught, the game randomly sets you back. Most of the time, back a lot. So get used to memorizing all those button directions. Cause the game fucking punishes you again and again for tapping the wrong button. One of the most laughable things is that the bad guys just randomly show up around the corner if you tap that wrong button. Hey guy, I was waiting for you around the corner. You literally fucking just took. It's magic my friend. You move from one low budget location to another free production value location until you meet up with this Dr. Oha. Those two feds. And the woman, well she's the most dangerous of all. They call her heels because of the stiletto shoes she wears. The last thing anyone ever sees. Yeah, I saw them. Well, that's great. What are we gonna do? Who is it? House cleaning. Um, come back later. Uh, it's really not a good time for us right now. Sorry, must do house cleaning now. And then the shit starts. The girl you met on the plane is actually some fucking T-1000 stalking ripoff bitch that follows you around and actually has the most character depth in this piece of shit. To show you how random shit is, does she want to kill these dicks or take them in alive? Also, who is she working for? Who the fucking shits is she? I love how these news articles show random stuff about Wirehead. Is Wirehead a public figure? Is he that important that he deserves the headlines in the local paper? If I as the player have no clue who this dickwad is, why should locals even care? The most playable parts of this movie are the car chases. They resemble another FMV game, Road Avenger. Most of it is shown in a third person view, so you can actually see what's in front of you and make a reasonable path input choice. But again, these choices are hard blocked at times by random video hard cuts. This happens a lot in FMV games to just tell the player, you made the wrong decision, now fuck off and start over. Look at this, I go left, which is logic because there's a car on the right. I then go right because I see a building made of pillars in front of me. The video hard cuts and then shows this clip of Ned bumping into a bad guy car in an alley. Or it shows you a hard cut of Ned crashing into a random obstacle. It's shit like this that made me fucking angry. Whenever you stray from the exact correct path, you get random clips of Ned crashing, getting killed or caught while your front pad was clear of obstacles. This wedding car chase scene cost me most of my time, about 40 minutes of just memorizing input. I also got so annoyed that I heard this man say, What? Get back to a bunker? Get back to bunker? My mind was just flipping at this point. Another random thing is how each bad guy has their own way of getting rid of Ned and his friends. Sometimes they grab him, sometimes they kill him. So what is it? If they want this device in his head, which consists of a hearing aid with an antenna, it would be best to take him in alive and surgically remove the thing or something. Sometimes they just remove the antenna. What? What the fuck are you going to do with just an antenna? Talking about B-movie shoddy script writing, Ned's family gets taken hostage. I just got a call from a guy who said he's gonna kill Wirehead's family if we don't deliver Dr. Oha to the shipyard. Okay man, didn't get that notice of that once in the game. Some build up? His family is taken hostage on a freight yard ship. Ned and the female reporter have to navigate around the ship to find his family. This is also just hoping you tap the right button because bad guys are just waiting for you around every corner. What does bloody waters even mean? It looks like the ship just exploded in open waters? Fucking hell. The reporter and Ned got killed. So who's covering this story? Plot hole extravaganza. Oh boy. This is so tense. Look at this. Intense action. And it looks so real. I love this guy's acting skills. That little rat's starting to get to me. When I get my hands on that little freak, I'm personally gonna rip his eyes out. I'm gonna take that wire. Hey, you watch me! Look at this. Lovely. And what's up with the close-up of Ned's eyes every once in a while? Sudden awareness of what? 
Ugh. Hey, wanna see something random? Here it is. I go straight forward and... What in the fucking fuck? Why would you fucking jump off a ship when there is still even a deck in front of you? I did start to laugh every time Ned and company got caught from this point on. The acting became more bizarre and over the top. So you avoid all these assholes on this ship. Wait, look at this. Ned goes into this hallway, runs back, gets caught by two guys who were waiting around the corner. Where were they a few seconds ago when I entered? Let's try this again. Now I go right, avoid the hallway, the two guys don't even see us pass, and the two guys that were around the corner are nowhere to be seen. I like this guy. It's time for the T-1000 lady to show up and kick the fucking shit out of Ned and friend. Remember, Ned goes from being a pussy to someone who can occasionally fight. Uh, why look at me, lady? Wanna see some prime acting talent? Shut up, kid, or I'll pitch you to the fish. This guy had his acting career all laid out for him. Then we go into the 90s cliche female temptation scene, in which the reporter tries to lure the bad guys into a room where Ned and her kick the fuck out of them. Ned, can you fight or can you not? Then it's like 10 minutes of watching sadly act dialogue, with no player input as Ned and the reporter need to get to her editor to report this super story about Ned being chased by bad guys. Another random event occurs with a chase scene and a boat. That's what the producers could get their hands on for this script. cutting away in the most annoying car chase scene in the game. See, you get to pick between three cars, but only one gets you to the final scene. The game fucks with you, thinking in the long run, the buggy or Mini Cooper get you there as well. Both of these gets you long car chases, but end up at a dead end eventually. The only choice here is to pick that red pickup truck, which gets you to the ending scene. I wasted 20 minutes, each on the buggy and Mini Cooper with those long ass chase scenes. For no goddamn reason. Every move here, going left, right, up, resulted in this buggy crashing into those boxes or that police car. It also doesn't help that the camera sways under the buggy at a critical moment, so I can't see where the fuck Ned's going with that buggy. Hey, yeah, uh, is this filmed in Toronto or what? Get your hands up! Come on! Get out of the car! Can you hear that accent? Get out of the car! Car! I can't do a Canadian accent. And this looks like the CN Tower in Toronto. Eventually with the red pickup truck you get the correct chasing scenes. There are also random with these fucking interrupting hard cuts to show you you did wrong. So eventually after all that shit you get to the newspaper HQ. Can't believe we made it. Yeah. Not so fast. And these three random bad guys are just waiting for you. Who in the fuck are these guys? Never seen them. And then a cop show up. And these cops don't want Ned into custody? Look at how this Canadian cop is holding his firearm against this guy's head. Like a pro bro. Like a pro. That was for me. But who in the hell are you? And why did you punch him? Everybody come on. I've got two hours if I'm gonna make that deadline. Yeah, let's run to make this the best cover story in the whole world. And then the T-1000 lady shows up in yet another outfit that sets the mood best. Ned can't fight for shit again. I never quit a job until it's done. But tap the right buttons and you kick the lady her ass. Dr. Oha gives the speech of his life with this love and peace bullshit. She has a very bad head injury. I think I can save her. Call an ambulance. But why, doctor? She's been trying to kill us. There's good and evil in everyone. It's just a matter of what buttons you push. And then Ned gives a speech at a conference and is the coolest guy in the club all of a sudden. The end. Fucking hell, this must have been an hour wasted of my time on this ridiculous product. Anyway, is it any good in 2021? Take a guess. Take a very long guess. If you were a kid in the 90s, you'd expect to actually play games on your Sega console. Products like Wirehead do not count as a game. They feel like a vanity project, a budgetary project from a movie studio to just throw money at something for yearly tax purposes. You don't have to play this shit. Go ahead and watch a long play video and feel cheated of your time instead and see my video as a public health warning.
Thank you for watching this video. You made it to the end of the 16th episode already. Go watch the other 15, where I place games like these in today's standards. Give a thumbs up if you liked this video, and even subscribe to keep updated. And I'll see you on the next in retrospective video.